Hey guys, it's Becky. Welcome back to my channel and another vlog of a typical homeschool day for us. Any day, whether it's a homeschool day or not, always starts with a load of laundry, so that's what I'm doing. And I also live by my crock pot, especially in the fall and winter when things are really busy. Nothing makes me feel more domestic than putting something in the crock pot in the morning and knowing that it's cooking while we're doing things and then it's ready for dinner time. So on this particular day, I'm making one of my new favorite recipes and it literally does not get any easier than this. It's just chicken breasts with barbecue sauce and water. I wanted to find a pulled barbecue chicken recipe and so many of them had different spices, had extra sugar and weird things that we don't need to add. I mean, I definitely don't want to add sugar to our food. So this recipe is literally just chicken and barbecue sauce. I'm using the Simple Truth Organic original barbecue sauce from Kroger. I use about one and a half full bottles of the barbecue sauce in the crock pot with water. Cook it on low for about six hours and then once the chicken is done I shred it with a fork and before I put it on the plate or on buns I put a little extra barbecue sauce on top if you just want it to be a little bit spicier but it is so good. Everybody in the family loves it even my husband and he's not terribly fond of my cooking sometimes but even he likes it and I'll serve it with northern beans. You could make it with cornbread or just like canned corn or green beans. It is so good. It's so simple and it's really, really good leftovers. So that's what I made on this morning and then we had the leftovers the next night. So I don't know if you guys remember, I have some really old YouTube videos where I shared a bunch of my favorite homeschooling resources and it took me a long time to compile those lists and find all those resources. There's so much information available to us right now on the internet, which is amazing, but it's also overwhelming. So thankfully, I found a website called Learnamic. It's a free website that lets you search thousands of learning materials across hundreds of sites and sort them and filter them by topic, format, grade level, cost, and more. So you get the right resource that you need for you. The database on Learnamic contains all types of resources from mobile apps and YouTube videos, books, video games, online classes, printables, and more. It's a free website to use and over half of the resources listed on their website are free for you to use. One really neat thing about it is if you have a favorite resource that you want to share with other homeschooling parents or educators, you can submit a resource to the website. So here I am submitting one of our favorite little science tools, which is the Zoomy 2.0. We love that and I'm submitting it on the website to recommend it to other people. And this particular day, my fourth grader needed a little extra help with some division practice. So I hopped on Learnamic and found a free worksheet for her to give her some extra practice with division. I wish I had known about Learnamic when I first started homeschooling. It would have saved me so much time, but now that I do, it's going to save me even more time when trying to find educational videos and lessons and apps and classes because there are so many resources on this website. Like I said, it's free to use, and so make sure that you sign up for your account. You can hop on there and look for all different types of educational resources, even if you don't homeschool but you want to find some learning games or even some free classes for you that is either free to watch or maybe there's a couple paid classes that you're wanting to take, definitely stop by Learnamic and check out their website because there are tons of resources on there. So once I got my fourth grader set up with her lessons and her division worksheet, it was time to go ahead and get myself ready for the day. So. Before I went upstairs to get ready, I was switching the laundry that I started that morning and then I'm up to go get ready and go to lunch. You guys know where we're going for lunch. 10 points to you if you know where we go to lunch probably five to six days a week, then you win a prize. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I'm doing is switching the laundry and then going to get ready for the day. How am I supposed to make the bed with you in it? Huh? Are you ignoring me? Alright, you can nap a little bit longer and then I have to make the bed. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. You have a good nap. You have a nice nap and I'll make it. 
So we went to lunch and we got back. Loki was finally out of the bed. So even though it's not technically in the morning, I decided to go ahead and make it because I feel like it still makes you feel so much better when your bed is made. I like to try to always share with you guys something about our curriculum or some footage of me teaching in whatever homeschooling vlog that I'm doing. And so I've gotten a couple questions about what my oldest daughter's doing. I usually tend to focus a lot on my fourth grader because I am a lot more involved in her day-to-day -day lessons. But I do get a lot of questions about my high schooler and what she's doing. So today I thought it'd be really fun to share with you kind of a little bit of footage of her doing her language arts program, which if you don't know, we use the Good and the Beautiful's high school language arts program. We use it for freshman year. We're using it for sophomore year. We still love it. And I'm going to take you and show you a little bit more closely kind of how their language arts program is set up and all of the different subjects that it covers. So this is the unit that you just saw my oldest daughter working through. She's in 10th grade and she's on unit two. This is really all you need uh, at, at a time for each unit. You have your unit workbook your grammar and writing guide, you'll have a chapter book and some geography cards. So even though there's not much here on the table, it covers so much information. Punctuation, writing, grammar and usage, spelling, geography, art projects, art studies, literature. There is so much rolled into just one unit from The Good and the Beautiful and we love it. And that's one of the reasons why I love it. I don't have to plan out all of these different topics and subjects, they're all already rolled in for me. So a typical unit book looks like this. At the beginning, you have a grading sheet, you have spelling dictation, you have memorization of geography, Latin root words, sometimes poetry, you have vocabulary, you have short answer questions, you have a reading assignment, and like this right here, it'll tell you what chapters to read for this unit. Right now, she's working through this book which is another one of those things that she thought she didn't want to read and now she actually enjoys. That's happened quite a few times where she's like, oh, this book doesn't look like something I would like, and then she loves it. So in this particular unit, she's going to be reading chapters 17 through 33 of this book. Then she'll have um, some written response questions, uh, different things about the author or what happened in the book. She also has a, a writing project. There's a writing assignment in every unit from The Good and the Beautiful. This one is a really big one. They're definitely beefing up their writing assignments from year one versus year two. This writing assignment has to be, I believe, 2,500 words. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it's an informa informative essay in at least 2,500 words. So they're definitely increasing the workload in the writing department, which I think is good because as you get closer to graduating high school and starting college, you're going to have to be able to um, do papers like this from time to time. So and it tells you what to write it about, how to use internet to research information. Here you are studying a painter and the different works of that painter, which I love this. The art projects and the art studies alone, I think are just incredible. Talking about um, the, uh, the artists and the different time periods that their different pieces were created, different styles, and then they do also assign an art project at the end of each unit as well. Here is some geography, and then they have the cards that go along, and they tell you which card to use, and I'm sorry about the glare, but so here's an example of a geography card, so labeled on one side, not labeled on the other. Here is a sample of one of the poetry memorization cards, here's another geography card, um, and then another the poetry memorization, and then here is one for um, Greek and Latin root words, which is really important as well. And then here at the end is the art project for Unit 2. It's an English countryside in watercolor pencil. And they'll tell you at the beginning of the year what you need, what supplies you're going to need. So I did go out and pick up watercolor pencils, and this is showing you kind of an example of what you're going to be creating and how to create it. So I just love it. I think it's such a well-rounded curriculum. It does cover so many things. The grammar and writing guide is really, really helpful for all different things with grammar and punctuation and usage, uh, diagramming sentences, all different types of anything grammar-based or writing is in the grammar and writing guide and then also the video lesson. So it's amazing. We love it. I cannot say enough good things about it. And I've talked about it so much. And that's one of the reasons why, because I just feel like 
I've never used the Good and the Beautiful's lower levels for their language arts, so I don't have anything to compare it to with that. But for high school, I think this is amazing. It makes planning it so easy for me because it does include so many topics and subjects that I don't have to go out and find individual curriculum for. It's all rolled up into one. I will have the Good and the Beautiful's website link for you guys in the description box if you wanna check it out for yourself and see more about their elementary levels or their higher levels like their, um, like their high school level. I think you guys will love it. So that is it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's homeschooling vlog and seeing a little bit of my high schoolers language arts program. Um, just how I do some chores throughout the day and that crock pot recipe. It is so easy and if you guys try it, make sure you let me know that you did and how it turned out for you. And if you decided to spice it up with anything else other than just the barbecue sauce, let me know that too so that maybe I can try that in the future. I like to keep things pretty simple though and healthy and I feel like that's a really good balance of both of those things and it's really, really delicious. So. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure if you did, that you give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see any other homeschooling vlogs in the future, let me know what you would like to see. I do a lot of these videos based on things you guys ask me or request for me to do or talk about or show. So make sure you leave in the comments if you have any other homeschooling related day in the life footage or clips that you would like me to share with you guys. And I'll make notes and try to sh show that sometime really soon. So make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.